I just see uh, so many, so many folks here today that are just happy and excited. Um, and um, I've had an opportunity to speak to a few of you. I hope I have the opportunity to speak uh, to, to more of you one-on-one -on -one, um, as, as we uh, conclude the presentation. But thank you all for being here. Good morning. Welcome to a beautiful Long Beach day. Um, I won't take responsibility for the weather, uh, but I'm so happy that it's sunny and it's beautiful out here. Thank you for being with us and joining us today. So today we're here to celebrate, um, I don't say this often, but I'm gonna say it today, one of my personal favorite projects in the city, the Colorado Lagoon Restoration. Uh, uh, you guys, uh, you all know the, the history and the many years and the hard work that it took to get here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that history, um, and we're going we're gonna to talk about what's coming next and what you should expect uh, in the next uh, couple years as we go and undertake the very final phase in the master uh, restoration plan that was developed in the early 2000s. Hey, who are you? <laughs> uh, I took that for granted. My name is Eric Lopez. I'm your director of public works. I have the privilege of managing this project as a project manager uh, for the city. So, you know, former project manager and the current director of public works. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, so I'm. This is um, this is going on and off. So if that keeps going, I'm gonna throw away the microphone and just talk loud. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll keep giving this a try. Okay. So uh, first off, I wanted to introduce uh, a very, uh, well, uh, there it goes, okay. Do I really need this microphone? Okay, all right. Um, we'll give it a shot, maybe we can fix, uh, fix it and get a clear uh, signal um, for, for our next speakers. But. I wanted to take this opportunity and, uh, and introduce uh, someone very special to the project, uh, someone that has really pushed us to continue to keep this as one of our highest priority projects. Um, and it's remained just that. And when it got really hard with uh, permitting and with the design and with all the logistical um, details that we needed in order to finalize the plans and the bid package, uh, we kept getting encouragement, we kept getting support, and we kept getting uh, direction on, on keeping this project uh, moving forward. So I, I'd like to uh, introduce our uh, local council member for the third district, uh, Susie Price, and invite her up to say a few words. Well, good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, a huge thanks to Eric for kicking us off this morning. This is an amazing, amazing day. I'm so grateful to be here and to have so many people come out to celebrate this incredible accomplishment. Um, I want to start by just thanking the people and the organizations who have been a part of this project. I'm a big believer in acknowledging the work of the people that came before you because let's face it, none of us single-handedly have built anything during our short years in service on the city council. We have built what we have today with the help of those who came before us. So I know today that we have Congressman Lowenthal with us. I don't know where he, oh, there he is, right in the front row. Congressman Lowenthal was a huge, huge champion of this project, as were my predecessors, Frank Colonna and Gary DeLong. And more importantly, most importantly, the community members who formed the Friends of the Colorado Lagoon. So Dave Parazzi, Dave and Tina Parazzi are here. They actually flew in from Northern California this morning to be with us. And I don't know if Heather Altman is here, but I want to make sure that we acknowledge her great work as well. Um, this community has been the beneficiary of their many, many years of hard work in this project. I also want to thank the community that I live in, which is Alamitos Heights, right on the other side of the park here. When I first took office in 2014, as many of you know, the water quality in the lagoon was terrible. It was not a place where people could swim. 
And through the great work of our Public Works Department, our Parks, Rec, and Marine Department, and by working with the Coastal Commission, we were able to restore aspects of the Colorado Lagoon, enhancing the northern section of the Colorado Lagoon, creating a walking path, um, putting in eelgrass and other amenities in the lagoon that allowed for more oxygen and water quality enhancements that now create an environment where people are swimming. And I tell everyone, there are more baptisms in the Colorado Lagoon than I've ever seen these days. It's unbelievable and I love it because we have people from all over the region coming and enjoying the Colorado Lagoon every weekend. We have stingrays in there and jellyfish in there and amazing birds. And my husband Mark is here. That is our favorite walking route. We walk the Colorado Lagoon multiple times a week and I'm so proud of the project. But we all know that in order for us to have long-term good water quality for the Colorado Lagoon, we need to do this open channel project. And my good friend, Eric Zahn, who's here, who's taught me over my years as the uh, member of the Los Cerritos Wetlands Authority in so many capacities that he serves in, in order for us to have good water quality, we need tidal flow and water circulation. And that is what this project is going to provide. And it's gonna be an incredible project. This is still, I believe, the first and only coastal mitigation bank in the state of California. And so for those of you who don't know what that is, it's, um, it's basically, think of it as a bank. Think of it as a bank. So we have entities, like this project is partnered, partnering with the Port of Long Beach. And I see Bonnie Lowenthal from the, par the Harbor Commission here with us. I'm not sure if there's anyone else here from the port, but... Um, that we've created a mitigation bank out of the Colorado Lagoon and that became the banking instrument that allowed for this project to be funded uh, to a tune of almost $30 million. Without the port participating in purchasing mitigation credits from the Colorado Lagoon's mitigation bank, this project would not be possible. And so without the port, we would not be standing here today. So I'm so grateful for them. And of course, I want to thank our mayor, who's been a major champion for this project in all the time that he and I have served on the council together. I want to thank our Public Works and Tidelands team. I know Eric Lopez, you already met. Josh Hickman is here. Josh has been an amazing champion. <laughs> Mohsen Habib, Charlene Angusco, and um, our Parks and Rec, Parks, Rec and Marine team is here um, as well. And I, I know this isn't part of today's project, but, but I did talk with the director of Parks, Rec and Marine about creating a permanent pickleball court somewhere in this park <laughs> at some point as, as we envision the future of what this park is gonna look like. So um, he's here now and I'm gonna be introducing him in just a minute. This project has been a labor of love for me and my family. When I first became the council member, there was a lot of opposition to the project. There was a lot of opposition because there were concerns about losing um, play space in this park for soccer and um, softball and all the other sports activities that happen here. But the city team worked very hard to make sure that doesn't happen, that we don't lose recreational opportunities in this park as a result of the Open Channel Project. And through their creativity and through my insistence that this project was absolutely going to move forward, the community really learned to embrace the project and really learned to um, uh, celebrate it. This project will result in the creation of approximately 3.5 acres of new rare coastal wetland habitat. It's amazing. I'm so grateful to have all of you here today. I thank you for partnering with us on this project. I thank you for celebrating its success. And I wanna turn it over to our Parks, Rec and Marine Director, Brent Dennis, to talk to us a little bit about the project. They tell me that the microphone will work now, so for those of you in the back, I'm not going to be shouting at you, but hey, what a beautiful day to gather in one of our gorgeous 166 parks. We have a lot of our Parks and Recreation Commissioners here today, so we're glad that you could make this important part of your day. So happy Veterans Day. You have so much to celebrate today besides the groundbreaking of this amazing project. You know, the word partnerships has come up a lot. It's my favorite word that starts with P, but pickleball was mentioned, so I, yeah, there they are over here. 
it's everywhere. So, um, you know, I, I do want to assure the community that all of the existing amenities and our parks and recreation uh, facilities around this area, we're going to try our best to maintain access and keep all of our programming active. That's really, really important. But uh, all, all the attributes of the project that the councilwoman highlighted and what you've heard from Eric, uh, really outstanding examples of environmental stewardship uh, with also a commitment to our wildlife. We're going to be introducing some really great uh, native species. Uh, there's going to be great pedestrian trails, a bikeway, a bikeway, uh, bikeway connection for connectivity out into the greater neighborhoods. So that's really, really important. So um, I, I couldn't be prouder of this project. It's going to be very transformational. But we're also committed to making sure we communicate the status. If you have any questions, certainly you can reach out to Public Works, Park Recreation Marine, Council District 3. Everybody is going to be really committed to uh, keeping the lines of communication open so you always know what's going on. So uh, again, a great weather day, great reason to be celebrating as a community, another outstanding uh, improvement that makes Long Beach one of the best cities in the country. So thanks for being here today. Thanks, everyone. I'll turn it back to Eric. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, there's a couple other people I want to recognize. Uh, we have two commissioners from our Marine Advisory Commission here today as well, uh, Teresa Marino and Elizabeth Lamb. Thank you for joining us today on this special occasion. We, we also have, um, have a special guest, uh, former, uh, one of my former bosses, and, um, and someone that uh, really helped uh, change the direction of this project. And when uh, Public Works and Parson Rec didn't have the greatest relationship, and we weren't on the same page in terms of what needed to happen at this beautiful uh, uh, wetlands, um, she helped uh, get us on the same page and get us uh, toward uh, the direction that we're now going. And that, pers uh, that person is Amy Bodek. So Amy, if I can ask you, you're standing. Just wanted to say thank you for everything and for your work early on in the project. Amy is the big planning boss now in the, in the county. So thank you, Amy. Um, I also uh, want to acknowledge the hard work of our, some of our consultants. This is not a project that city staff had all of the expertise uh, to really make happen. So we've had a wonderful team early on, Moffat and Nickel, uh, specifically Kim Garvey, a local resident, played a critical role. So I wanted to thank Kim Garvey. Um, and, and then we had um, Eric Zahn. Eric Zahn and Title Influence, they've been around since the beginning, from graduate uh, um, students uh, all the way through uh, now. Their own, uh, Eric has his own company. I wanted to say thank you, Eric. Uh, Eric Zahn, for all of your contributions to this project. Um, uh, and then also uh, Steve Capolino and his team at Anchor QEA. Steve has an amazing team. We've had ups and downs in this project. We've had challenges where we had to design and redesign, problem solve complexities with utilities and with the location of the channel and how the water was going to flow. And he helped us guide us through all of those engineering uh, challenges that you don't really hear about. So Steve, thank you and the team for all of the hard work with the design. Uh, the team of Anchor QEA has just been amazing. Um, I also, um, the, the Port of Long Beach was recognized earlier as a critical partner. Uh, they really are, and they're an unsung hero here. And I just wanted them to know that, you know, we really appreciate their partnership. And what they've done to work with us as we created the bank that Council Member Price walked us through, and they helped us ensure that we were maximizing the value of those banks that ended up benefiting the ecosystem here and the overall design. Just that was huge. And so thank you to the port and all of the staff that's rep representing the port here today. Um, you know, there was other partners that we dealt with, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, the State Coastal Conservancy, the Rivers and Mountains Conservancy, LA County, the Supervisor's uh, Office, um, that 
helped with funding, helped with support when things were stuck, that helped us just overcome a lot of obstacles. So I wanted to give them all a shout out and a thank you as well. Uh, it's, it's, it really seems like it was yesterday when I remember uh, working on this project and re, re, when I was reading the Beach Bummers list and when, I, when the Colorado Lagoon was listed as the fourth worst water body for beach water quality in the state of California. The fourth worst in the state of California. We had one of the dirtiest uh, 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 areas of water here um, and that was our challenge, clean it up. Yeah, so we've undergone through a huge transformation. We, we treat the water that comes in through our major uh, storm drains. Uh, we redirect flows into the sewer system. We collect cra trash before it goes uh, back into, into the lagoon. We have bio, a system of bioswells. We develop native plant buffers. We've done a lot to improve the lagoon to where it's at today. And a lot of the people that were involved with those projects, either on the construction side or the planning design side, they're here now. I wanted to thank you too. The work, the workers, it, it just plays a, a huge, huge, huge role. Um, a few years back, we celebrated removing the lagoon from the beach bummers list, but we stayed out of it. And, we're, and I'm confident we're gonna continue to stay out of it. So a huge uh, milestone uh, for us. I, I'm looking through my list here and, and I, did, uh, I did miss a, a, couple, a couple people, a couple of our consultants. Um, uh, Michelle Harati that does project and construction ma uh, management for us. So I wanted to recognize her. She's gonna be the boots on the ground coordinating with everybody, making sure that everybody knows uh, of the different components that are gonna happen. So Michelle is really, really important, and she's gonna be a contact to all of our neighborhood groups here that are, that are gonna get help. Um, our our um, Josh Hickman, our business operations manager for Public Works was recognized earlier, as was Charlene Exuko, but uh, one of our project managers that helped us uh, through too, Angelina uh, Del Cid, she's here as well. I wanted to recognize her for her work. It really does take a village to get a project like this out of the ground, and we have that in this city. So uh, thank you all for being patient as I go through uh, this, this list. Um, finally, None of this would have been possible without the active support and partnership of the Friends of Colorado Lagoon. So a huge shout out to them. You know, we work with community organizations, we work with community associations. The Friends of Colorado Lagoon was different. They were with me in the airplanes to Sacramento to advocate for funding. They were with me at the Regional Water Quality Control Board meetings and the State Water Quality Control meetings explaining from a resident perspective why this project needed to be a regional priority. And I really think it was because of them and their advocacy and the way they approached the problem and the project and the partnerships that we're here today celebrating. So Dave, thank you and thank FOCO, the entire board. We have a few board members here that have all played a critical role. There's also someone that's no longer here with us, but that was very special to me. And I had a really close uh, friendship with him and that's Ray Thorne. And so I wanted to acknowledge Ray acknowledge his contributions and thank him because he was right there with uh, Dave Perazzi and I as we were pushing this project forward uh, early on. So thank you, thank you, Ray. All right, so now I'm actually gonna ask Dave uh, Perazzi to uh, come up and say a few words on behalf of, of, um, of FOCO. Uh, but you know, before he comes up, I wanted to give our uh, local congressman, uh, Alan Lowenthal, a chance to come up He's been involved from way before I was involved here, and he's joining us today. And um, if he can please come up, Congressman, and give a few words, uh, we would really appreciate it. You can try. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Well, I, I wasn't planning on speaking, but uh, I do go way back. I remember when there was that like, drain project, and I think we had the uh, the uh, LA County Public Works or had the uh, this huge drain at, I think it was outside of Rogers and uh, 
And, and I went to that and I was shocked. And then I met with, there was no project at that time. There was nothing. And I met with Dave and with Harriet and with Tina and especially Ray Thorne, who was, and, and Michael, uh, uh, who was my inspiration also. And they said this could be done. Not the drain that they were just going to make, but this could be a wonderful project that the community wanted. And so I listened to them, and I went back, and I, and I met with Sam Shukat, who should get some credit also. Sam, I don't know if he still is, because I'm not in, in at the state. Sam was the head of the, Calif of the Coastal Conservancy. And we brought Sam down here. And we did a bicycle ride around it and talked about it, what it was. And Sam said he will help us do the feasibility study. And that was the study that really set this in motion and designed it. Um, and so, and I spent many to early times with, uh, with Ray and Focal. And I miss Ray greatly also. Uh, but I'm just pleased to be here as somebody who was here at the beginning. And to really also thank, this would not have happened without Helene and Focal, and you know all the people in Focal. They were the ones that kept meeting with me and pushing me and saying it could be, it, it could happen, it could be real. Uh, and I just want to thank them to take this opportunity to thank Friends of Colorado Lagoon. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Dave, you can try the microphone. It seems to be working now. Okay. We'll try the microphone for a little while. Um, I never miss an event that has shovels. So that's, I had, once I heard there was going to be digging involved, I had to come for this. So um, I do want to correct one thing that Alan said, though. Um, when we met with Alan, we never had to push Alan. Usually Alan was pulling us along. And there were many challenges early on in this project. And um, Alan, from the very beginning, never told us, well, maybe we should aim a little lower, or maybe we should cut back. He was full-throated behind us 100% the whole time, right from the very beginning. And so thank you very much, Alan, for that support. Um, there's been a lot of um, thanking going on. I do want to add a few more thank yous. Um, Susie's support has been great. And as she said, Thank, yeah, thank you, Susie. And as she said, we also had great support from Gary DeLong, her predecessor. It has been a long project, and there have been many challenges. And somehow, through the journey, we've always been able to either go around a challenge, go over or through a challenge. And it, and it really was because the right people came along at the right time with some skills and some passion. And um, it took a while, but here we are. So, um, so thank you, Susie. Um, I also want to make sure and mention the port. They've been a great supporter, not just in this final phase, but throughout the whole project. They've helped financially. They've helped bring volunteers down to the lagoon for some of our work days. They have been a great partner throughout the entire uh, restoration. And so thank you, Bonnie, and, and the rest of the port. Um, uh, I also want to thank a couple uh, of people. Ray Thorne's name has been mentioned quite a bit. He was incredible, and he helped guide us at a time when we had a slightly adversarial relationship with the city. And Ray came in, and he was the perfect man for the job. Ray was able to smooth anything over. And Ray came in and, and really helped us turn around our relationship with both the city and the county. Um, we couldn't have done it without Ray. And, um, and I miss him very much, too. Uh, I also want to thank Dr. Christine Whitcraft, who couldn't be here today. She's at a conference. But she has been the president of Focal most recently for, I think, six years. And she, more than anybody um, from the Focal side, has helped worked through lots of issues. She was a member of the um, inter interagency resource team, the IRT, which you know went spent years trying to figure out how we could get this mitigation bank set up, how many mitigation credits would be available, and everything else. She's worked tirelessly, and uh, so I think she deserves some credit. So please join me in, and she couldn't be here. 
Otherwise, she would be standing in front of you right now. Um, and lastly, I just want to share a quick anecdote. Um, I can remember when the Coastal Conservancy funded a restoration feasibility study, and as part of that, there were public meetings. And I remember uh, at least one of them was at the downtown library, and uh, Moffitt and Nickel was the consultant hired to perform this study, and uh, and they had meetings where the public could say, "What do you want for your Colorado Lagoon?" And many great ideas came up, but the one that was by far most universally desired was to recreate the original open waterway that connected the lagoon to Alameda Bay. And it was obviously the most difficult politically, uh, financially, everything else. But uh, fortunately, we've had a team that's been able to keep things pulled together and get us to this point. Um, so that was, that was 20 years ago when that happened. And I'll share one more brief anecdote. And that was uh, when Focal first started, um, we were, we were very green. We didn't green as in we were very inexperienced and we didn't know much about how to get from A to B. And we went and sat down with the people at the Bolsa Chica wetlands and to try to learn from you know, what they'd been through. And we were shocked to find out, as, this was as the restoration was just starting at Bolsa Chica, we were shocked to find out that they had been at it for over 20 years. And we all agreed at that point, there's no way this is going to take 20 years. And, and here we are. It's been actually 24 years since Focal started. I think 22 years since that restoration feasibility study was done. So um, yeah, it's been an incredible journey. We've been just so lucky with the support we've gotten from the city. And in particular, this guy right here, Eric Lopez, has been uh, just with us the whole time. Um, and, and Charlene Ensuko has also been with us for, for the mo majority of the project. I mean, we've really, really had good people at the city to help push this thing through. So I will stop there. Thank you all very much for your support, uh, your volunteer hours, the money that you've donated to Focal, just the community support that you've shown that's kept us inspired and moving forward and, and helped bring us to today. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it. So there's uh, two more uh, two more folks I want to recognize, and then we'll conclude uh, the program and we'll do the photo uh, opportunity here. Um, the the contractor for this project is gonna is Reyes Construction. So I wanted to thank Reyes for being a partner. We worked with them on the phase two of the Naples Sea Wasp recently. They did a fantastic job. They're a big contractor, they have a great reputation. So we're really grateful and thankful that there are partners for this project. So to Reyes, I wanted to say uh, thank you uh, for your partnership uh, and, and support. Um, and then um, they uh, mentioned the EIR uh, or the early phases of the project. And this project had a full blown environmental impact report. And the biology uh, evaluation that's required in that EIR was uh, pretty substantial, pretty significant. We have here with us too, uh, as well, uh, Mike Trotta, who was the project biologist back in the day, who is now the president and the CEO of LSA Associates, who guided us through that EIR process. So Mike, just wanna say thank you for being here today. Thank you for being around all this time and for helping us get to this uh, part as well. Thank you, Mike. So with that, that, this concludes the program for today. Thank you all for being here, really appreciate it. We're gonna do a ceremonial shoveling, take a few pictures, uh, and then mean go around. So everybody, there are snacks over here, there's drinks over here, please take some. The staff does not wanna carry that stuff back to City Hall. Thank you very much.